Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you guys a bunch of my favorite snakes. So buckle up. There's going to be a lot to see. You're watching Snake Bites. Every now and then, I just want to show you guys a bunch of really cool snakes that are extra special to me. And I try to do some animals that I don't show all the time, like this albino blood python. Now, blood pythons are amazing animals, and they're just something that I've always loved ever since I was a little kid. But when these T-positive albinos came out, they really blew me away. Now, these guys are from Malaysia, Sumatra, and Indonesia, and they can get about five to seven foot long. And you can see they're really big, healthy bodies snakes they can have up to 18 to 25 eggs so they're pretty big producers they sometimes have a little bit of dodgy personalities but as you can see this guy is just super cool anyone that watches the show knows that I'm really into the huge constricting snakes and I tell you what reticulated pythons may be one of my favorites. They're just such active, interesting animals, and probably the animal I'm the most fond of that I work with are these purple albino tiger reticulated pythons. Now these have a little bit of dwarf blood in them, so they're probably only gonna max out at about 14 to 15 foot, but I have some adult tiger retics that are over 18 foot long and 150 pounds, so they're just really cool constrictors, and as you can see, they have such incredible heads and such amazing eyes. But again, it's probably not for everybody. You've got to be prepared to keep a really big snake. But if you have that ability, you can't go wrong with a retic. I couldn't do a favorite snake show without showing some of my ball pythons. Now I know some of you guys are like, you show too many ball pythons. And then other people are like, all I want to see is ball pythons. So I'm going to just take a few minutes to show you some really special animals to me. Then we'll move on to some other snakes. Let's start with this amazing animal. This is actually a banana pinstripe. And again, the banana morph has been really popular over the last couple years. Probably one of the biggest investment snakes out there. And this banana pin is just a really gorgeous animal. And he's been breeding pretty good for us. So I'm looking forward to producing some of these guys in the future. Who is the newest member of the BHB crew? Is it A, George, B, Josh, or C, Sam? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. Now this ghost black pastel pinstripe might be one of the prettiest snakes that we're raising up this year. It's just amazing how the hypo gene, the black pastel gene, and the pinstripe gene interact and make this incredibly beautiful snake. Kind of always looks like it's in shed with that kind of bluish purplish look, but it's just a gorgeous snake. This killer bee chocolate is really a cool snake. I love the fact that that super pastel spider mixed with this chocolate makes it just kind of look like a really blown out animal. Again, all the really heavy blushing, that's really from the chocolate influence. Again, it's gonna be really cool to plug this into some other mutations. This might be one of the most incredible ball pythons that I produced this year. It's just the most beautiful snake. It's so bright yellow, and with that white head, it just really makes it pop. It's actually a lemon blast super stripe. And I tell you what, I've been thinking about this snake for two or three years, so when I finally popped one of these guys out, I tell you, I was blown away at how incredible it is. When I think of bright snakes, I certainly think of this little girl here. This is a Super Pastel Enchi Lesser, and it's literally glowing in color. I'll tell you what, I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. This is an Ivory Enchi, and I can't say that I like it so much because it's just such a beautiful animal, although it certainly is. It's really the genetics behind it that just make me really love it. The super yellow belly, the ivory part, is really powerful, but then when you can mix it into Enchi, Tell you what, I'm thinking a lot of stuff into Puma Highway Super Stripe. It's going to be a really good female to have. The last ball python I want to show you guys before we move on to some other snakes is this Firefly Super Stripe. I tell you what, the Super Stripe stuff really makes the color bright, and when you put pastel and fire together, you can be assured that animal's going to pop. When I think of boa constrictors, my two favorite morphs happen to be Arabesque and Sunglow. So what better snake to show you guys than a combination of both of them. This is a Sunglow Arabesque. So again, it's combining albino, hypo, and arabesque. Just makes it super clean and the colors really pop. Now I tell you what, I can't wait till this guy gets six or seven foot. 
he's just going to be so gorgeous. When you think of favorite snakes, it's often one of the latest snakes that you picked up. It's because it's new and you're still really excited about it. So these are a few snakes that I just picked up last week. This is an albino paradox Kenyan sand boa. And the paradoxing means the black blotches that are kind of bleeding through with this. Now this is an albino snake, but genetically these black blotches breed true, which is pretty cool. Now taking it one step further is believe it or not, a snow black blotch, which this is basically means that it's also anathristic. And it's just got a completely different color. And the black blotching on it is really cool with this particular animal. And then last Kenyan that I picked up that I was pretty excited about is a relatively new mutation that's only been out for a year or two and they call it a snow splash. Now the splash is actually the increased amount of white. It's almost like a type of piebaldism. I tell you what, I'm really excited about these three snakes. When it comes to Cal Kings, I'm kind of a big enthusiast. I've been working towards this project for a long time. This is an albino, black and white, or desert phase California King. And you can see this little bugger is probably about 95% white taken a long time to get there. I love Australian pythons and these little spotted pythons are really amazing snakes. This happens to be a granted maculosis or granted spotted python. And instead of having the big blotches down its back, it's actually got a granite patterning. It's a genetic mutation and is recessive. Albino Arizona Mountain Kings are special to me because we bought the very first ones ever produced from a guy down in Kansas City. Believe it or not, he just went into two different pet shops, bought two unrelated Arizona Mountain Kings, bred them together, and out popped these beauties. Another Mountain King that are really beautiful and I truly love are these Terra Humera Mountain Kings, or no block eye really commonly called. You can see they're just really beautiful pattern. And again, they're very similar to the Arizona Mountain, but look completely different. When it comes to rat snakes, there aren't many cooler than the Kunisher Island rat snakes outside of Japan. Now these albinos are just one step cooler than that. The normal Kunisers get about five foot long and can actually turn a turquoise blue color, but for some reason, I'm really fond of the albino version. Mex Mex or San Luis Potosi King Snakes has been something I've been working with since I was about 16 years old and I've always just really loved them. So when I had the opportunity to get into the granite Mex Mex, which is just another pattern mutation, I jumped all over it. I tell you what, these guys are stunning animals. There was no way that I was going to show you guys a bunch of favorite snakes of mine and not show at least one hog nose. And this happens to be my favorite hog nose that I own. Not because it's the rarest, just because I really love this animal. It's a super anaconda male and I have some big plans for him this year. I work with a bunch of sand boas, but probably the most beautiful one by far are these sunset Indian smooth scale sand boas. The normal smooth scales kind of brown out and get a little ugly when they get older, although I still love them, whereas the sunsets stay that nice orange pattern. Now guys, I could show you my favorite snakes all day long, so this is just a smattering. I'll try to revisit this topic every once in a while. If you have some suggestions for me, go ahead and comment down below. I'll try to get it into the show for you. All right guys, the Facebook poll decided you guys wanted to shave half of Josh's beard and dye it pink. Well, we're going to take it in a slightly different direction. It's going to be fun. All right, here we go. I don't know how this is going to take. So, like, I really don't want to make you eat the dye, but it might happen. I'm not doing a good job at this, I hope you know. So uh, how long have you been growing this beard? I think about three months. Do you like Cheese Whiz? I love Cheese Whiz. Okay guys, I thought I'd never say this, but you're about to see me and Georgie shave my balls. <laughs> <laughs> this is nasty here. I don't even want to touch it. God, your face is going to look so fat. All right, guys, it's time for the close shave. You like that, buddy? Yeah, I love it. You got some rough hair, bud. We could leave it like this, but I think we're going to go one step further. You ready? <laughs> You're all ready for brain surgery now.
All right, guys, everyone here are silly horror movie buffs, and we want to know, why does the black guy always die first? Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I could probably do about 10 of them just like this one. As a matter of fact, if you guys want to follow any of my animals or animal adventures, just make sure to hit me up on Facebook and Twitter, at SnakeBitesTV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. So who is the newest member of the BHB crew? Well, if you guessed B, Josh, you are absolutely right. Nice work. It's basically when you train an animal to go after a target when it knows its food. Let me show what I mean. If I go in this gator's cage with a mouse, it has no interest. But as soon as they see the target, they're gonna go after it.